In this video, you learn how to play piano music on guitar. Arranging music from other instruments onto the guitar is a great way to expand your creativity on the instrument. Hi, this is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net and in this lesson today, I'm going to uh, present to you a couple of examples of some piano music and show you some ideas of how you can arrange such music onto the guitar. So first you will hear the piano example then you'll hear an arrangement I've done of that piano example on the acoustic guitar and then we'll break each piece down. It's, it's not long but we'll just break it down so I can give you a little bit of an insight into my thoughts and process of how I went about um, you know, arranging these piano samples if you like onto the acoustic guitar. So let's get into it. Okay so here is the first little piano excerpt little piece um, that we're going to arrange onto the acoustic guitar. So have a listen. Okay, and here is, I'll play for you first the acoustic arrangement of that piano example, and then we'll break it down. So here is that acoustic arrangement for you. Okay, so there you have it, the acoustic arrangement of that piano uh, sample that I first played for you. So let's just have a little look at what's going on here. So first thing you might notice is I'm not trying to perfectly transcribe the piano part. Okay, I'm, it's, the idea is not to try and do exactly what the piano is doing note for note. I mean, the piano is a different instrument, right? It's a different setup. You've got Four, four fingers, eight fingers, two thumbs. Um, there's, you know, things you can do on a piano that you can't do on a guitar and vice versa. So we're not trying to do a carbon copy of the piano piece on the guitar. We're, you know, keeping in mind that we're on a guitar and seeing what we can do. And there's lots of options, but let's just run through what I, I went with there. Okay, so first off, the key of the piano piece was F major. So I capoed at the third fret, so I would play all open chords. If I was in the key of F, well, we are in the key of F, but if I didn't capo, then I would have an F chord, bar chord, um, C open chord, I would have a G minor bar chord, a B flat bar chord. Nothing wrong with bar chords, but what I was going for here, I wanted open chords. So I capoed in a position that would allow me to get all those chords as open chords. So, you know, my D, um, we had the A, we had the E, and we had the G back to the A. Okay, that was the progression. So first thing is I chose to get a nice open sort of sound and and um, okay. But the other thing was it's a you know if you listen to the piano piece it's a very straight sort of sixteenth note fill one e and a two e and a three. So you know whilst I wasn't really that concerned on exactly the notes that were being used of each chord in the piano piece, I did recognize that okay one it's a sixteenth note fill and it's um, it's uh, it's arpeggiated. Okay, so I kept the 16th note fill here on the D, you know, move into the A, arpeggiated, the E minor, okay, and the G and the A. Okay, so pretty straightforward there the first time through. Now if you listen to the piano part, the second time through, particularly, you hear that there's different voicings of the chords going on in the piano part. It's sort of starting low and then moving up, staying you know, within the single chord. Okay, so again, while I didn't want to 
painfully listen to that piano part and try and work out all the notes because it probably work out pretty weirdly on the guitar possibly anyway I just recognized the basic thing that was happening there which was same chord progression played second time through but some higher voicings being used of the chords at certain points so I emulated that it's basically looking at the principle behind the thing it's not the exact thing that's going on but the principle okay or the concept okay that's what I'm trying to get to here trying to um, make the point of so here second time through I was playing D and as I got to the end of the bar I moved up to a D triad uh, what is that second inversion triad um, up here at uh, if we take the capo into consideration and I'm at the fifth fret fifth position okay so we had the D and the higher voicing to emulate what the piano is doing and similar with the A we had the A and then this first inversion A triad up here around the fifth fret again taking into consideration the capo so now the keys good here also why I chose to, to capo and get these particular chords is because of course with a D I can play an open D string and when the A chord comes up I can play the open A string so these are things I think about you know when I'm thinking how I might arrange something like this piece onto the guitar and then we went E minor now here uh, where are we yeah up here I went up to this higher E minor triad shape because we are capo we can use the drone of the low E and we've got the higher notes but noticed instead of going and playing on the higher string with the B note here I actually used the harmonic at the 12th fret 12th fret from the capo okay okay the reason for that is that can still ring through as you can hear it now whilst I get down to the G chord that follows and then the A okay it carries it over a little bit better than just killing the note right there as you go to your G you could do that but it's kind of a little abrupt here I thought carrying it across with that harmonic is a nice way to connect to the G and then the A I used little triad shapes again to emulate what the piano is doing okay so the point here is we're not trying to again carbon copy the piano onto the guitar we are listening to the piano part and it's giving us ideas we're, we're being creative we're thinking okay how can we take that and make that sound similar you know same sort of thing um, but on the acoustic guitar so there's lots of ways we could have done it this is not the only way but I chose to capo to give myself open chords and open strings to drone and I chose not to try and follow every single note within the chord as I say exactly but just okay we're arpeggiating I'll arpeggiate it's 16th notes so I'll use 16th note rhythm voicings are moving within the chord I'll do that you know particularly in the second time through the arrangement and just little things like the little harmonic there is a nice way to as I said connect one chord to another without the sort of abrupt sound of that higher note sort of dying out if you like that's one approach so perhaps you'll come up with your own way of dealing with that particular part but certainly doing this with other instruments and arranging them to the guitar is a, is a great way to go about it okay so let's have a look at one more example here so I'll play you the piano part first so you can hear that so let's do that Okay, and here is one way that you could arrange it on the acoustic guitar.
Okay, so there you had the acoustic example of that second piano excerpt. So let's just briefly break this one down too. So similar to the first one, I decided to capo this time at the fifth fret. So the piano piece here was in the key of D minor. And I decided to capo at the fifth fret, again, for similar reasons to get some more open chords than I would perhaps get if I was to not capo in the key of D minor. So that's the sort of thought process there. Also, this one was uh, had both, you notice in the piano part that you had arpeggiation happening in what we might call a verse, let's say, and then let's call it the chorus that it goes into. It was more sort of, you know, a strum on a piano, of course, but it was, you know, playing the notes more or less together, a little bit of separation there, but you could certainly hear the contrast between the verse and the chorus of that piano part. So that's what I was going for in the acoustic too, because again, we're wanting to emulate the piano part, kind of pick up on some of the things that are happening without again, wanting to carve and copy it right onto the guitar. So, you know, I was um, picking a couple of little embellishments, on the C there. Okay, so it's not exactly what the piano was doing, but it's, you know, the piano's got a couple of little embellishments and little things going on there. So I was doing a similar thing with the acoustic part here. So the A minor, and then onto my F, and that's actually an F um, suspended two chord there, because I've lifted off the, the A note, and I've got the G coming through. So that's on the F. And then there's a little bit of embellishment going on the F there again. And then we've got a C and a C with a B in the bass. Just a little slash chord that brings it back to the A minor nicely. Okay, so on the F, sus2. And then we've got little embellishments. And this is where we came into the, what I'm just calling the chorus. And this is where the piano part, right? The notes were more being played together than separately. So that's what I'm doing here. Now what I'm doing is I'm sort of breaking it up. It's piano-like in that I'm kind of strumming the chord and then um, more or less just hitting the bass note of the chord, the root note, maybe a couple of other notes there, but certainly separating the strum from the bass this sort of thing where the back of my nails is strumming the you know, top three strings or thereabouts of the chord, doesn't have to be really precise, but the top part of the chord, and my thumb is playing the root note. Same on the A minor, and the C, and the C was two bars, and you had the little slash chord, C with B in the bass, to then return to the G and go again. And the other thing, if you listen again to the piano part in the chorus, you hear little notes jumping out. And that's what I was kind of emulating here. So I was on the G here, right? Just little, uh, it's not really like a melody, but just little things you hear in the piano part that I wanted to emulate in the acoustic. So I'm doing there, similar on A minor here. Okay, just sort of having certain notes pop out by really targeting them, targeting them and accenting them. The C, same thing. And then down onto the slash chord and then back to the G again. A minor. C. Now I could have just strummed it all and it would be fine, but I wanted to kind of emulate again what the piano was doing there. So hopefully you can kind of hear that in the piano part and hear it being emulated here on the acoustic. This is the idea. I want to encourage you to listen to other instruments and figure out those parts for the guitar, okay? It's a really, really, really great thing to do. I do it all the time. I've had to do it for certain things uh, along um, <laughs> my, my guitar playing life, if you like. Um, but it's great to do. It gets you thinking and creating on the instrument. And sometimes you do some things that you wouldn't have done otherwise. So it does get you playing in different ways as well. So play around with those parts and then see if you can come up perhaps with your own arrangements of the very same piano parts that I, I was just doing myself in this video or certainly listening to some other piano music and um, working it out for yourself. If you like this video, then you'll love this free ebook audio I've created for you called the Acoustic Guitarist Toolkit for Unplugged Songs 
concepts. In this ebook, you learn the concepts used to get that acoustic feel and sound that you hear the pros get when they play unplugged versions of songs on guitar. This includes learning how to instantly make chords played in electric guitar songs sound much better on your acoustic. It's super simple and easy to do. You also discover the trick to easily creating beautiful flowing chord progressions that sound more like a pianist is playing than a guitarist. This is particularly great when you want to emulate other instruments in your acoustic versions. Plus, you gain the skill of connecting these different concepts together to create even better, more sophisticated sounding acoustic versions of electric guitar songs. All examples in the ebook are tabbed out for you, accompanied by audio recordings of both the electric and acoustic versions. This way, you can clearly hear how each concept covered really contributes to the sound of the acoustic version in comparison to the electric. So click the link in the description below this video and download your free ebook audio, the Acoustic Guitarist Toolkit for Unplugged Songs Concepts. You'll have it in your inbox within minutes. Let me know in the comments section what acoustic guitar topics you'd like to see covered in future videos. I'm all ears and I would love to hear your suggestions. I read every comment so let me know what you would like to see. If you like this video then hit that like button and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and of course don't forget to hit the all important notification bell button so YouTube can tell you when I've released a new video. This is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net. As always, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for watching this video and I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. Mm -hmm.